die. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Stop your grinning and drop your linen. Steve Tassie, the board game guy here, and I'm going to help you get set up to play Aliens. Another glorious day in the core. Another glorious day in the core. Day in the Marine Corps is like a day on the farm. Every meal is a banquet. Every paycheck of fortune. Every formation of parade. I love the core. The minis that come in Gale Force 9's Aliens game are pretty awesome, especially when painted up nicely like mine have been, courtesy the incredible Scott Moyle of Moyle's Meticulous Minis. He's a Toronto-based miniature painter with a twice-weekly Twitch stream, and he does commissions. Even without painting, it takes a bit of work to get the minis off their sprues and assembled. So if you haven't done that yet, go get to work, my friend. This video will still be here when you get back. The box comes with a lot of stuff in it, and if you've watched my unboxing video, you've seen what's in the box already. But this video will look at the components and what they do in the game. So, let's get started. There are four double-sided map boards. One side is for missions in Hadley's Hope itself, and the other side is for the missions that take place in the atmosphere processing plant. The map boards have squares drawn in gray lines that are the spaces characters and aliens can occupy. Only one character, blip token, or alien slash alien swarm is allowed per square. Uh, more on all those components to come. Movement is allowed in any direction, orthogonal or diagonally. Uh, there are white lines on the boards that are the walls. If a white line matches a gray line, you can still move on the diagonal. Uh, but if the white line extends past the gray grid, it prevents diagonal movement at that point. Every single doorway on the map does this, so you are not allowed to move diagonally around a door jam. Openings between the wall lines are all doorways. Doors are considered closed until someone or something is standing next to it, triggering the automatic opening mechanism. Next are the mission mats. There are three campaign missions in the game, Newt, Escape, and Survive, as well as the Rescue Side mission, uh, the Resupply mission, and several different bug hunts. Each mission mat has a map on one side. This will tell you how to configure the four map tiles to make the board for that mission, as well as having set up information for uh, other bits like where the team starts, where the computer terminals are, where to put supply crates and starting blips and so forth. The reverse side of the mat will include scenario-specific information, including things like victory conditions and any special rules that you need for that mission. There is a deck of cards with the Colonial Marine logo on the back. This is called the Endurance Deck, and there's a lot to know about what it's made of and how you use it. The Endurance Deck is the life of your squad. If there are ever no cards in both the Endurance Deck and its exhaustion pile, the Marines immediately lose the game. There are four different types of cards in the Endurance deck. Weapons, which have a blue gun icon on them. Equipment cards, which have the green helmet icon. Events, with a yellow star. And hazards, with a red exclamation point. Weapons, equipment, and events are all good cards for the team. Hazards are bad. They're either bad for the whole team, or they're just bad for the specific character that encountered the hazard. Weapons and equipment cards that are in your hand can be played during the equip cards phase of your activation turn. Events can be played during anybody's turn or even during the alien phase. Hazards are resolved as soon as they are drawn or revealed by a player, but they are not resolved if they are revealed by a motion tracker card. More on those in a bit. Whether you decide to use the deck organizer, that's the weirdly shaped cardboard frame, or not, the Endurance deck itself sits on top of the reshuffle card. That's this thick cardboard thing that says reshuffle on it. Frequently, cards from the deck will get placed underneath that reshuffle card, and as it gradually climbs up to the top, it will reach the top of the Endurance deck, and that means that it is time to shuffle the Endurance deck, and then put the reshuffle card 
back on the bottom. What can you do with this endurance deck? There are five different verbs that apply to endurance card. Draw, reveal, exhaust, recycle, and discard. They all do something different. When you draw a card, it goes from the top of the endurance deck into your hand. There is no hand limit, but the more cards that you have in your hand, the fewer cards are in the endurance deck, and if the endurance deck runs out, that's bad. If you draw a hazard card, you must immediately resolve it. Reveal is an action that some event cards, hazard cards, or character abilities require you to do. You reveal the top card off the endurance deck and check what type of card that is and compare it against the effect that caused you to reveal the card. Once you resolve that effect, the revealed card goes onto the bottom of the endurance deck underneath that reshuffle card. If the card that you reveal is a hazard card, you must resolve the hazard. When playing cards from your hand, or using the effects on weapons or other equipment cards, you may have to do what's called exhausting cards in order to pay the cost to play or use the cards you want to use. You take the appropriate number of cards off the top of the endurance deck and, without looking at them, put them face down on the exhaustion pile. If you ever have to exhaust a card and there are no cards in the endurance pile to exhaust, then you instead discard cards from the exhaustion pile to the discard pile. Discard pile cards are gone from the game. Some character or card abilities allow you to recycle cards. A recycled card comes off the top of the exhaustion pile and goes underneath the bottom of the endurance deck, below the reshuffle card. Some abilities allow you to recycle a card from your hand, a rare few allow you to recycle a card from the discard pile. Some effects require you to discard cards into the discard pile. These cards are lost for the remainder of the current mission and may be lost for the remainder of the entire campaign. Discarded cards usually come from a combination of the endurance deck and the current player's hand, but sometimes the effect will specify hand only. If you don't have enough cards in hand or in the endurance deck to meet the discard requirement, then you discard cards from the exhaustion pile until the total number required has been met. Managing the squad's endurance deck and exhaustion pile is key to surviving Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core. Character boards. There are seven double-sided character boards, five for the various Marines, as well as Ripley and Newt. Character is a blanket term for all of the people in the game. A character can be either a hero or a grunt. Character boards have hero sides and grunt sides. The hero side is used by any character that is being played by a specific player at the table. The grunt side is used for a character that isn't being directly controlled by a single player. The hero side is faster, deadlier, smarter, and has more special abilities. Each character has speed, defense, melee, tech, and aim scores. Speed is how many spaces they can move in a single action. Defense is their ability to fend off alien attacks, and melee is their ability to actually kill an alien in self-defense. The tech stat is how good they are at barricading doors and using computers, and aim is how accurate they are with their weapons. Higher is better for all these various stats. The text box to the right of the character photo contains the details on their special abilities. Marines also have a rank on them, but civilians like Ripley and Newt don't. A hero's rank, one, two, or three, determines how many grunts they can order around on their turn. So Lieutenant Gorman may be pretty useless on his own, but as he is rank three, he gets to order three different grunts on his turn. Rank is also used for determining start player each round and resolving situations where there are multiple outcomes that the players can choose from. Every hero has abilities, but very few grunts have abilities. Character abilities come in four different flavors. One, passive abilities that are always on and they trigger whenever appropriate. Two, on activation abilities, which trigger as soon as that character receives the bug stomper activation token. Three, end of activation abilities, which trigger just before the character passes the bug stomper onto the next player. And four, during activation abilities, which can be triggered at any point during your turn while you still have the bug stopper.
Hero Gorman, during activation, can recycle three cards from his hand to let another Marine immediately take a free action. The wording of the ability seems to imply that Gorman can do this as many times a turn as the player has the cards in hand to pay for. But I haven't gotten a definite clarification on that rule from Gale Force 9 yet. Hero Newt has the end of activation ability that she can exhaust two cards to move a character that is in line of sight of her two spaces closer to her. The wording on the printed character card makes it look like she must do this, but that is a typo and it should say she may do it. So it is optional at end of activation. While the rulebook and the card don't explicitly prevent her from using her ability on characters who are knocked down, more on the knockdown concept in the gameplay video. Uh, representatives of Gale Force 9 have confirmed with me that knockdown characters cannot be the subject of Newt's ability, nor can uh, any effect that grants free movement or other free or bonus actions target someone who's knocked down. Each character also comes with a corresponding miniature, obviously. The character miniatures are green and they look like humans, and the 16 alien miniatures are black and look like, well, aliens. There are six aim dials, one for each of the adult characters. Newt cannot use weapons, so she doesn't need an aim dial. You set your aim dial to uh, your character's starting aim level. Do the same for all the grunts as well. Every time you make an attack roll, you drop your aim one notch, but every time you take the aim action, you increase your aim one notch. Turn dial. This tracks what turn it is. Certain mission scenarios need you to keep track of the turn, but some don't. The mission maps will tell you whether or not the mission you're playing requires you to pay attention to what turn it is. The game comes with three dice, two ten-sided marine dice and one standard six-sided die for the aliens. The marine dice are rolled for marine attacks against aliens, defense from aliens, attempts to use tech, and other occasional activities. When rolling the marine dice, you want to roll low. The alien die is used for blip movement and breaking through barricades. Aliens want to roll high. There are 21 alien tokens used to create swarms of aliens. Only one figure can occupy a space at a time, so sometimes there are more than one alien on a space. This is done by placing a figure on top of one or more alien tokens. The bigger the swarm, the more tokens. Blip tokens, they have a white dot on the back and a number somewhere from one to four on the front. These are used to indicate where there are aliens, but no one has actually made visual contact with those aliens. Four of the blips have white borders on them. These are called mission blips, and they are used in the Newt mission, that's mission number one. They are not used for any of the other scenarios. Spawn point tokens. There are four numbered yellow tokens, one through four, that are used to mark the various spawn points for the mission. Each mission mat tells you where to put them, and they are where new alien blips will appear at the end of every round. Barricade tokens. These are used when you successfully block a door, tunnel, or alien spawn point. Supply crate tokens. These tokens mark where there are crates of weapons located on the board. Each mission that uses them will have spots marked out on the mission map to tell you where they are. Facehugger tokens. There are two of these little bad boys. They are used for mission three, survive. Facehuggers are a lingering enemy that keep you alive just until the end of the mission. Sentry gun tokens and the sentry ammunition dials. Certain scenarios allow you to place sentry guns on the board and the double dial lets you keep track of how many, uh, how much ammo those guns have. Movement tracker cards. The other deck of cards, so not the endurance deck, determines how many new blips get added to the board each round and which spawn points those blips appear on. Many of the cards also have text effects such as forcing players to discard or reveal cards remove barricades, add tunnels to the board, or make all the blips on the board move extra spaces. They come in three different levels of difficulty as marked by the number of blips that appear on the back. The more blips, the harder the card is to deal with. A reminder that if a motion tracker card causes you to reveal cards and you reveal a hazard card, you do not resolve that hazard 
you simply compare hazard to the results on the motion tracker card and resolve that effect, then the hazard card is put underneath the reshuffle card underneath the endurance deck. Tunnel tokens. Some of the motion tracker cards cause new tunnels to appear on the board. These are new spawn points for aliens. Exit tiles. There are two oblong tokens marked exit. There's exit A and exit B. These are used as destination points for certain missions. The mission mat will tell you where you place the exit tokens on the board. Once a character has reached the exit of a mission, they are out of the game. They do not take any more turns. They do not take actions, or fight, play cards, or draw motion tracker cards, or do anything else that a character does during the mission. The activation token is the big disc with the Bug Stomper logo on it. This is passed from player to player to indicate who is active at any given moment. Now that you know what everything is for, let's get set up. Find the mission map called Newt. It's the only one you're gonna need for this tutorial. Arrange the four map boards in the configuration shown on the mission map, and then use the diagram on that mission map to place the four spawn points, the exit token, the computer terminal token, the four mission blips, remember those are the ones with the white border around the backs, and then two random regular blips. The colored zone at the center of the diagram indicates the spaces where you can start Ripley and the Marines. Place the barricade tokens, the alien tokens and figures, and the rest of the blips nearby for use during the mission. Blips need to be kept face down. The remaining computer terminals, supply crates, sentry guns and tokens and dials will not be needed for this mission. Set the round dial to one. Each player picks a character other than Newt and takes an aim dial and the character card of their choice, putting it hero side up in front of them. Leave that Newt card aside for now. Any characters not selected as heroes will be placed on the table grunt side up. Regardless of the number of players, Ripley and all five Marines will be used in the mission. Take the endurance deck and sort out all the weapons and equipment cards. Players may go through these cards and give two weapons and two equipment cards to each character, grunts and heroes. The character's backup weapon that's placed in the slot to the right of the character card must have the keyword backup on it. And the character's primary weapon, that is the one that goes in the left spot, cannot have the backup keyword on it. Note that if a weapon has the keyword cumbersome on it, it cannot be used for defensive fire. Also, note that if a weapon has the keyword bulky, it means that you cannot have a backup weapon equipped while you have the bulky one as your primary weapon. Once each character is geared up, shuffle the unclaimed weapons and equipment cards in with the event cards and the hazard cards, place the shuffled deck on top of the reshuffle card, and place that in the endurance deck area of the deck organizer. Divide the motion tracker cards into their three groupings. This is based on the number of blips shown on the backs. Shuffle the easy cards, that's the one with the fewest blips, and deal out five. Then shuffle the medium cards, that's the one with the medium number of blips, and deal out five. Shuffle those ten cards together and set them aside. Shuffle the remaining easy medium and hard cards together and put them on the spot of the card organizer labeled motion tracker deck. Then take those 10 cards that you set aside and put them directly on top. This means that the first 10 cards of the motion tracker deck are guaranteed to be easy or at worst medium. You're now set up to play your first mission and are ready for my Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core tutorial part two gameplay. Thanks for watching, and good luck, Marines. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.